Hi there, my name is Alden, and I'm a design advocate at Abstract. Abstract has empowered the workflow of thousands of designers and their teams. In this video, I'll be going through as much of the product as possible, some best practices, and use cases I've seen various teams adopt. We'll cover the basic concept and benefits of Abstract, a product overview, how to make the most of libraries in Abstract, as well as some other features of the product. Without any further delay, let's jump in and learn a little bit about what Abstract is for those of you new to the platform. Abstract is a design workflow platform that provides modern design teams with one place to version, manage, and collaborate on files. Our users often describe us as Git for designers, but with so much more. It's important to know that Abstract is not a syncing service. A sync-based architecture looks at two binary files and can only understand that there's a conflict, but is no way to resolve it. Abstract is true version control. That means we understand the entirety of the file, and every time you commit your work, the product knows exactly what's changed between the two versions and provides ways to resolve conflicts and merge those changes to master. Abstract is a new way for designers to manage and version their files, document their process, and work in parallel. Now that we're clear with some of the basic concepts, let's take a look at the product. In Abstract, we group users by organizations. Every user, by default, has a personal organization. You can think of this as a private space for things that might not be related to work. Unless you're working solo, you'll likely be part of a company organization as well. You can think of this as a home for your designers and what they're working on. We recommend that each company sets up a single organization for their designers, stakeholders, and developers. To navigate between a personal organization and a company organization, or create a new one, simply click the organization name at the top bar of your Mac app. Something you may have already noticed is that within my organization, I have projects. Projects are created to house an organization's work. They create a space for our files, conversation, commits, branches, and feedback. Teams typically structure projects in ways that make the most sense for them. Some of the more common use cases we see are to structure projects by platform, client, or feature. Before I go through these use cases, let's just create a project together. In this example, my team already has projects for our iOS and our Android applications. Let's say though that I need to create a new project for our web application that we're working on. I'll just click create new project in the top right, follow the same naming convention, add a hex color, and I have the option to set this project to either public or private. Perfect. So now I can either import or create a new file from scratch. It's important to keep in mind that with private projects, I'll need to either invite users or send them a link to join my project. In the Mac app, I have a couple different controls around how I view and sort projects. I can view by the list of the grid, star them so they appear first, sort alphabetically, or just search quickly to find the project I'm looking for. I only have to sync the projects to my Mac app that I'm active in. If there are projects I'm not involved with, I can choose not to sync those projects simply by clicking the lower right hand corner and going to stop sync. I can also link directly to projects, export files directly from the project level, or I can archive those projects if my team's no longer active in them. Now that we've created our first projects, let's talk about use cases and how to best structure them in a scalable way for our team. In the example I just showed you, as well as internally here at Abstract, we set up our projects by platform. I think that this is definitely the most popular way to structure projects, however, it's not the best fit for every team. Structuring projects by platform means I have to make the same changes across multiple projects. If I have focused teams working on platforms though, this is definitely a really scalable structure as well as a clear and concise way to organize your files. If I'm on a team that's looking for a little bit more granularity at the project level, I might break up my projects by feature of my product. I think that this use case requires a little bit more structure in terms of naming conventions. However, there is a benefit to having multiple files for multiple platforms of a single project all located within the same feature project. With agencies or any client-facing design team, we typically see an internal adoption of either of the previous use cases with the addition of private projects set up per client. When I set up a private project, I can restrict visibility as well as invite external users that have limited visibility into just that private project. It's a best practice to chat with your team and have an open discussion about use cases for projects and what would scale the best for the way that you work. Now that we're experts on projects, let's go into a little bit more detail in what makes up a project and how we actually version control files within Abstract. The way designers work with files in Abstract is super similar to the way that engineers work with code. In each project, we have a master branch. 
The master is the most up-to-date version of your files. The master is never directly edited, and in order to make a change to your master files, you must create a branch, file a commit, and then merge that branch back into master. At that point, master will reflect the changes approved by your team. Let's have a look at our Mac app and see what this would look like in the product. Let's dive into iOS Propeller. You can see I have a couple files here. From the project overview, my master files will be listed directly at the top. I have my onboarding flow.sketch file as well as my screens.sketch file. Since these files are at the master level, they're the most up-to-date versions of my design work. Once I actually access the master branch, I can go through the files, their structure, view the different artboards or view the different artboards by page and actually explore what makes up these files without having to open them up in Sketch. At the branch level, I can also see which linked libraries my files are pulling from. In addition to this, I can export files directly from here, simply by clicking on the dot 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 on the right hand side of the file name or right clicking the file. And I can also add new files to my master branch directly from within Abstract. We can grade a new file or import one, and we can also create a new file as a library. In addition to creating new library files, I can also link libraries from other projects within Abstract. We'll go into link libraries in a second, but first, why don't we make a change to master? It's important to note that we always need to open these files from Abstract. I can either create a new branch or click Edit and Sketch and have the option of creating a new branch or opening the file untracked. By creating a new branch, I'm establishing a place for ongoing design work to happen. Instead of creating a duplicate file and having multiple copies of Alden underscore iOS with icons dot sketch and Alden underscore iOS with icons v2, v2 final, etc., we all know how messy this can get. And by using abstract, I avoid ever having to create a mess like this again. All my files live within a project. When I need to make a change, I do it at the branch level without having to create multiple duplicate files, sending those back and forth to my team and losing work within a shared folder. My developers know exactly which files are the latest representations of our designs, and my team can work concurrently at the same time on our artboards and design files. Now that I'm back in Abstract, let's go ahead and open up one of these files and make a change. I've opened up the onboarding flow document and I have the option to open Untracked or create a branch. Opening Untracked just means that I will be unable to commit my work back to Abstract. I'd like to make some changes that might affect the master, so I'll go ahead and create a branch. It's important to note that you should always open your sketch files from within Abstract. That's how we're going to be able to track changes and affect our master. So now that I've created a branch, you can see it listed under the Branches tab on the left-hand navigation. I'd like to recommend that we always branch with some sort of an achievable intent. That way, all of our branches have a purpose, whether it's exploration or a new feature that we're working on. And when that purpose is realized, that's when we either archive our branch or merge it into the master so that it affects our source of truth. When I'm making changes to my branch in Sketch, I'll need to commit my work to push those changes back to Abstract. Commits are a great opportunity to add context to the changes that have been made to my designs. In addition to providing context for myself and other members of my team who may be handling these files, commits create a system of record for our design changes and an accountable history as to the work that's gone on. As a best practice, I recommend designers commit at least once or twice a day Whenever a good stopping point arises in your workflow, I would recommend pushing a commit back to abstract. In addition to providing context, commits can always be restored to reflect a previous version of your design files. By committing your work to abstract, there's an assurance that your changes will never be overwritten or completely lost, unlike with just saving a simple file or creating a duplicate file. Now that we have some good context around commits, let's go ahead and make a couple changes here. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this icon and add a little bit of a drop shadow onto the graph and the text field surrounding it. I'll save my work, I'll click preview and commit, and I'll push these changes back to abstract, along with a little bit of context around the changes that have been made, not only for myself, but for the rest of the designers on my team who may be working on these artboards or the same files. Cool. Now you can see the changes that have been reflected on the branch level with the different opacity icon. I can see the artboards that have been affected by the edited icon in the top left of the artboard. I can view strictly the artboards that have been changed by toggling on the file view. And if I go into the artboard, I can compare previous versions side by side. And I can also access an overlay feature 
allowing me to point out less visible changes. So really quickly, I can see that the icon and the graph have both been edited. I can also zoom in on these artboards and compare the past and present version at a greater detail. All of these changes are also tracked in the Commits tab, which we'll get to later. Now that I've made some changes to my branch, and I've communicated to my team that I'm ready to affect the source of truth, either from within Abstract or on Slack, I'm ready to merge my changes back into the master. So let's take a look at how we do this from within Abstract. I can go to my branch, see that the changes have been made at the branch level. However, they're not reflected yet at the master level. From my branch, I'll go to the top right and I'll click Merge Branch. At this point, I have the opportunity to add context. I'll click Merge and Update. And as you can see, my changes are now reflected at the master level. I have an additional commit in the left-hand navigation as well. And I can go back to previous commits, see when they were made, and see previous versions of this artboard, as well as who changed them and when. I also have the option here, like I mentioned earlier, to restore to a previous commit or copy a link to specifically this commit as well. If your team takes advantage of Sketch's Libraries feature, there's a lot of power to tap into when using libraries within Abstract. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, libraries are just like normal Sketch files. They're documents that contain symbols. However, these symbols can be used across multiple files. Within Abstract, we have the power to link libraries not only across multiple files, but across multiple projects. We call these linked libraries. And for the teams that take advantage of libraries already, Abstract unlocks so much potential to quickly and efficiently standardize assets across your design team. Back in Abstract, we've already created a new project for our web application. As you might have noticed, I have a separate project for my design system, which contains all the library files I need to work. In our new web app, I'll just create a blank file So we have our new file, and I'll click Link Library, go to my design system, I'll grab the Avatars and Components files, click Link. From here, I'll create a new branch to edit this file, and the next time that this file opens up in Sketch, I'll have access instantly to those libraries. For teams already using libraries outside of Abstract, I recommend using a plugin such as Symbol Swapper to redirect existing symbols to the correct instance located within Abstract. Now that we've covered the bulk of the tools that you're going to be using in your workflow, let's talk about some other features located within the Abstract Mac app and web app. When accessing each branch, there are four main tabs that you might have noticed already. The Activity, Commit, Files, and Collections tabs. Now each of these are important for different reasons. First, let's start with Activity. The activity feed is especially important for teams unable to take advantage of our Slack integration. This will be a record of all the changes happening at the branch, commit, or project level, including comments, annotations, feedback, mentions, commits and merges, etc. It's a great way to keep in touch and keep a pulse on what's happening with your team. The next branch tab is something we touched on a bit earlier in this video, the commits tab. This will be a living history and a system of record for all the changes happening on your team. You can always roll back to a previous commit and never lose design work. For example, in our Mac application, I can go back well over two years ago, open the sketch file as it existed then, and actually explore it, or even revert my changes all the way back if I needed to. This is part of what makes Abstract so powerful, and why true version control like Abstract provides has become an essential part of the modern design team's workflow. Files tab is relatively straightforward. It's where all of your sketch files and libraries live. From this view, you can do a couple things like create files, manage artboards, search for artboards, add libraries, link libraries, etc. And remember to always open your files from within Abstract. In Abstract, most items like branches, commits, and artboards are able to generate a direct and shareable link. If you want to share a group of artboards or present my work in a review, collections are a great option for us either by a default basis or at the individual artboard level in a collection, I can choose whether or not these artboards will sync for the latest update for master, therefore always representing the most up-to-date version of that artboard. Let's jump into Abstract and create a collection for ourselves. We'll go back into our iOS propeller project. 
You can see I have the Collections tab right next to the Files tab. If I right click on any of these artboards, I have the option to add them to collection or create a collection from scratch. I can provide a title and description, publish my collection from here, and toggle on and off whether or not I want these artboards to automatically sync. If syncing is turned on, these artboards will automatically update from the latest version of Master. If it's turned off, they'll represent a snapshot in time. You can see that all my artboards have updated in my collection. If I go back to the tab, and I have a grouping of these three artboards, I can reorganize them, and I can individually toggle which artboards I'd like to sync. I can share a link directly to this collection, which will end up in a presentation mode similar to this. Using the left and right arrow keys, I can quickly navigate between artboards in this full screen display. I can display the location of this artboard, the project, branch, commit it's from. I can also tag people, add annotations, comments, and feedback on the artboard. It looks like I didn't have the right fonts installed, so I'm hanging over a little bit. I can view a grouping of all my artboards in a collection, still from within presentation mode. And that's it. Collections are a super powerful and lightweight way to quickly share your work for feedback between designers, stakeholders, and in reviews. Building digital products is a collaborative effort. Abstract makes this more transparent by opening up the design process to the entire organization. Inspect is an easy way for engineers to quickly gather all the information they need to implement any design. Since Inspect is built on top of our versioning system, designers never need to upload the latest version of a file and engineers no longer have to worry about referencing an outdated design. With Abstract, you always have the latest version at hand on the web or in the desktop, pulling directly from the source of truth. Whenever your source of truth is affected, say somebody on your team committed new changes, specifications within Inspect are instantly updated. If you're looking for an older version of a screen, simply navigate through the history on the layer detail to see previous versions of the design. To measure layers and distances, simply hover over the artboard and select any element, or navigate through the file structure on the left-hand side. Inspect is available to contributors and viewers, both in the Mac application as well as on any browser in the web. As a quick recap, we've been able to cover a lot today. From true version control to libraries within Abstract, how to branch and affect our source of truth, as well as how to share collections with our stakeholders and inspect elements directly from our artboard. For those of you that haven't already, Abstract does offer a free 30-day trial, which you can find at goabstract.com. Thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.